Welcome everyone to a new update. Today we'll be talking about China and it's all going to be about earnings season as macro will be relatively heavy this week as many big events are taking place. But we are going to focus on the Chinese situation and what can we expect from Bitcoin out of that. That will be discussed today. Before we continue, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to this YouTube channel if you enjoy the content. Also, if you do know, we have partnered with Bybit and can give you one full month for free to our premium platform. We have made 14 R last month. All you need to do is sign up to Bybit through our link and you will be granted access to our platform as well. If you want to know all the information, check the description beneath where you can find everything that you need. The past few months, we have been seeing a ton of volatility across markets. Energy crisis has been taking place in Europe, while the war has been putting a ton of pressure on those prices. In the meantime, we have seen commodities rising across markets, we have seen inflation accelerating and way more. We have also seen currencies crashing significantly in Europe against the US dollar, through which the Bank of England and Bank of Japan are trying to intervene with the markets to avoid a complete disaster for their own currency. While in the meantime, the strength of the US dollar has resulted into an accelerated interest in that particular currency. In the meantime, we have also got the Fed increasing rates through which the yields have been accelerating significantly. We know that already they've gone up 20x if you look at the two years, resulting into bonds and guilds falling massively across markets, putting pension funds into tough territories. However, last Friday, news came out that the Fed might be pausing the actual policy after a 75 pips rate hike in November. Markets went up a bit. What does that mean? That's what we'll be discussing in this update and we'll also dive into a new crash across the markets which we'll be discussing now and it's going to be China. You might know what's happening in China already but we'll give you a small summary. The first glimpse we have been seeing about potential problems arising in China is the entire Evergrande and real estate problems arising a few years ago came mainstream last year. This was the first slight sign that things aren't going as they should be in China itself and that's putting pressure on the economies as well. The past quarter we have been seeing a case of slowdown on the GDP as the quarter um, measured a growth of 0.4% in China while right now data came out that yesterday that the growth for Q3 was all of a sudden 3.9%. That's very odd. And would that be manipulation or what's happening here? In the meantime, videos are popping up about ghost towns and empty buildings in cities which have been delivered for real estate purposes. So what is actually going on in China or in Asia at this point? Let's go through the markets because these give a big signal. The past few days we have been seeing destructive corrections on the markets taking place. The Hang Seng Index, which is the index of Hong Kong, has fallen by more than 6% on one single day amid the fears of their own economy. Next to that, later on the day, the Nasdaq Golden Dragon China Index made a record drop on a single day, resulting into a drop of almost 15% and it went to 19 on the day itself. This index measures Chinese companies like Alibaba, Baidu and more. It shows the markets are crashing and economies are falling, especially in Asia. Now, what do we see as well? Um, currencies are falling. Bank of Japan is until now desperately trying to intervene in the markets as they have been posting daily news on this. Yellen itself said that they should that she doesn't see any sign of it, but likely they will have to continue as the yen has fallen to levels not seen since 1990. In one year, the currency has lost more than 40% against the dollar. In the meantime, the yuan is also dropping massively as it's getting to levels not seen since 20, 2008. Markets are crashing, but what does it tell for the rest of the markets? That's what we're going to discuss in the next topic about the yields. The yields are definitely something to keep in mind and an eye on at this point. Everything is correlated with each other and I've stated that the yields need to fall significantly and very rapidly, otherwise economies are going to collapse. It's also not very beneficial for the US. As I've stated earlier, 
in this update that the Fed is likely going to adjust the policy as the current strength and the high interest rates isn't suiting for themselves with the incredible debt level that they have. If they need to make payments on their government bonds with these interest rates, they will end up paying more for that than for their own defense. However, the past few days, we have also been seeing a correction on the yields in Europe, primarily due to the news that um, the prime, new prime minister came around in the UK, but also the adjustments in policies taking place. The US didn't make any adjustment and even continue towards new highs and that's affecting Bitcoin as Bitcoin is clearly not breaking out. So what's going to happen on the yields? We have been discussing China and Japan and China stated that companies need to buy their own stocks to avoid a crash in the markets even more and in the meantime they are selling government bonds off the US massively to be able to buy back their own currency to avoid a crash there even more. What happens when they sell government bonds off the US, the yields are going to go up. And that's what we're seeing with the US currently is that we keep on running. Therefore, in the next few days, we'll be seeing a ton of news coming out in this regard and potentially a shift in policy as this simply can go on. Otherwise, economies are going to collapse across markets. What can we see in the markets and the charts itself? Let's have a look on the charts. So I've been saying something about the yields, right? So we see that the yields of the US are accelerating massively in which the 10 years came from 0.6% and it's up to 417 at this point. And we also know that from the past months, it has been running from two and a half to four plus in two months, especially since the Fed has been very hawkish overall resulting into the markets not seeing too much strength as indices are going down and we can see that the yields are going up and the dollar is going up so first we have to look at the um, government bond yields which ultimately right now it starts to drop a bit yesterday we've seen a pretty significant bounce while wow, we've got the pmi kicking in and pmi came in with a very terrible number even us was the worst of all the numbers came coming out which it should be resulting into the yields falling as people are actually expecting the Fed to, uh, to twist their policy or to pause um, as the economy starts to fall down significantly as those numbers are the first time since 2020. And that could be resulting into risk on going up. We have been seeing that indices are going up. Um, Bitcoin is not primarily due to the fact that Yellen has been speaking, but also due to the yields not showing with the overall weakness. But most likely we will be doing that in the next few days. So we have to look at what the yields are going to do. And we do have this bearish divergence here taking place, which ultimately could be bringing the yields down by half a percent. If we're looking at the Great Britain, we are already falling for four, from 4.5 towards 3.6. And if we are looking at Germany, we are also seeing that we start to fall even more. So we got the bearish divergence here. The previous high was 2.5 and we are back to 2.25 at this point. And when we're looking at indices, we are still continuing the slight upwards trend. Today, we are still waiting for earnings season to kick in. But at least we see some continuation of the strength here taking place. Now, when we're looking at the Hang Seng Index, we know that the uh, government of China stated that companies need to buy their own stocks to be avoiding another crash. So if you're looking at the weekly time frame, this looks like ultimate capitulation. We see numbers on the RSI not seen since 2016, not seen since the recent low in 2011, and not seen since the low we've got in 2008. So this is getting towards the climax as well, just like the youths are getting towards the climax overall just like the DXY is getting towards the climax overall, which means that we are getting towards the cutting edge of a reversal in the pattern overall, which should mean that this is going to bounce up significantly. Yields are going to fall. Dollar is going to correct as other currency is going to show more strength. And we can see that the dollar is actually still consolidating here um, and on the edge of the reversal, or at least going to fall down. I've got this theory, which is comparable to 2015, and if you look at the Hang Seng index, this, the, the, the price action here looks a lot like we, what we have been seeing in 2015 and 2016. And it has actually been suiting the entire bull market of Bitcoin too. No real correlation there, but I think that this one is going to reverse. It's going to have an impact on the, on the Bitcoin price action as well. 
So what we are looking at here is uh, we are looking at a case where the indices are bouncing up and we definitely need to see what Hang Seng and the Nasdaq Golden Dragon Index is going to do and what the interventions from the Bank of Japan and China are going to do for the markets. So what are we expecting when it comes to Bitcoin price action? I've been discussing it in my update earlier today as well. We need to be waiting for the actual breakout. The conclusion is that we're still holding the actual low here. Assumptions are that we continue holding that low and that we are ready to continue breaking to the upside if we crack 19.6. So the moment that China is going to bounce, the yields are definitely going to fall. Um, the DXY is going to fall and earnings today with Microsoft and Google are going to be relatively soft or at least some will be beating the actual earnings. Ultimately, Bitcoin will start to have that relief rally. But for now, we are waiting and therefore we are waiting on the macroeconomics to shift with the interventions taking place. So let's get towards the conclusion of this update. I hope you have been enjoying this small update on China and what's happening in the markets overall and why the yields are continuing to go up, resulting into Bitcoin still not breaking out. If you did like it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also make sure to use that one month for free for our premium platform. And also make sure to see the live stream that we're going to do on Thursday afternoon when the ECB and GDP is going to be released. And then I'm going to say have a wonderful day and I'll see you again tomorrow. Ciao.